Five, one of the biggest days of the year for Mexican restaurants is looking like a bigger moneymaker this year. I want you to take a look at Cinco de Mayo celebrations from 2020. People lining up for takeout only, but now many have gone from curbside service to opening up capacity. That is, they say if they have enough staff in order to do so. News Force Caroline Hecker joins us live outside Espino's Mexican Bar and Grill in Chesterfield. Where tonight, Caroline, the owners are depending on family friends for help. They are, Sam, but what a difference a year makes. Like you said, last year was all takeout. Now, how long has it been since we've seen a scene like this? Almost pre-pandemic. Like you said, all of the staff, including those family and friends, are working doubles today from open to close as they try to keep up with the increasing demand. Four. It's the day employees at Espino's have been preparing for for the last three days. David, I got you at 76. Customers eager to get a bite of Mexican food fill the new patio in a matter of minutes. The kitchen staff is working as fast as they can to get favorites like tacos and enchiladas out the door, but they're short several cooks. And people need to understand that people are just hurting. It's not that that server is not trying to get, give you attention or that cook's not working hard enough. We just are very, very short staffed. Roseanne says a lot of money goes into putting on the celebration, and she's down 15 or 20 employees. So she offered a sign on bonus to help with hiring ahead of the big day, but with no luck. So I got one response, and they didn't show up. Nobody comes. I'm telling you, nobody comes. To try to make up for it, she asked family friends like Madison Hughes to help out for Cinco de Mayo. I um, work at a jewelry store here in town, and I have experience in bartending, so she had texted me earlier in the week to see if I could come and be an extra set of hands for her. Kelly Kresge is training, one of the rare hires Espinos has made in recent weeks. My friend Angela here was able to get me a job and get me to come out here to work, be productive, and I don't want to sit on my couch and collect unemployment. Customers say they've noticed the side effects of the hiring shortage everywhere, but understand restaurants are in a tough spot. The service that we've experienced in the past several months, uh, it, it's a little bit been a little bit slow. You know, you have to tolerate it and understand there's a transition between what it was before and what it'll be in the future. Even so, the chips and salsa will continue to flow as restaurants and their employees battle back from a devastating year. Restaurant owners we've spoken to by and large say they blame unemployment benefits as the reason they're suffering this hiring shortage. But I talked with a professor of business at a local university who says that's just part of the story. He says low wages and that fear in general of the coronavirus is also preventing people from coming back to the restaurant industry. He said the biggest indicator to keep an eye on next fall is remote learning. He says if kids are back in the classroom, that of course frees up parents and allows them to get back to work. Live in Chesterfield tonight, Caroline Hecker, News 4.